Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and this week on the channel we're going to be starting and kicking off with a brand new team. As you can see on your screen in front of you, it is going to be consisting and revolving around that ho -Oh and Kyogre restricted combination. I took a lot of inspiration, if you caught it over the weekend, the regional over in Germany when Fevzi was playing that weather ball ho -Oh. So big shout out to Fevzi for that inspiration. I've built the team around around his concept put a few tweaks and twists of my own on the team uh, to start us off this week to test with and uh, what we'll do as always is we'll take it into battles we'll see how we're performing see what we're struggling with see what we're doing well against and adjust accordingly as we go along until we get that finished product at the end of the week or the two week cycle whichever we play this for because we've had a few murmurings around playing maybe a uh, Rayoga and uh, sorry not a Rayoga a Rayquaza and Groudon team which would be a lot of fun we've also had Zekrom thrown up as well so if there's any other core combinations that you'd like to see played on the channel going forward do leave them in the comment section below and let me know and I will try and get around to playing as many of them as possible but onto today's team as I say is revolving around that hole with the weather ball taking advantage of Kyogre's um, primordial sea ability it is going to be Primal Kyogre of course not scarfed Kyogre then we've got uh, the mega of the team going to be Gengar we've got him on top in there an alternative option or two in Cineral, what you'd normally see predominantly on this team. It still has the Intimidate, still has Fake Out support, but I felt the Wide Guard and Helping Hand really provided a little bit of a different dimension to the team going forward and something that I do want to test and try out with. So Helping Hand Shadow Ball, for instance, gets the one-hit KO through Shadow Shield on Lunala, which I think is incredibly useful, uh, which otherwise this team might struggle a little bit against. Uh, we've got the Tapu Koko uh, again uh, with the Ferium this time helps us a bit more against the dragons it could be a little bit more problematic to the team salamence requiser etc and then we've linked and patched the end up of the team with uh, Assault Vest Cartana. Cartana, another favourite Pokemon of mine. I think with the Assault Vest, it fits in this team quite well. So it uh, gives us a little bit more firepower against opposing Kyogre, which again could be something uh, a little bit awkward to deal with, especially as ho -Oh is one of our restricted Pokemon. So just having that extra utility there does help us out a lot, I think, personally. Um, so we'll see how that goes. One thing that I would say straight away when building this team and something that I'm a little bit skeptical of is our ability to deal with opposing Tapu Koko very well and this might be something that we'll have to patch for later in the week we'll see how we get on in this first episode today but it might be something that we're struggling with a little bit all of the details and the pace of the team is down in the description as always there is a roll pace poker pace do let me know if you try it out and uh, take a look at the details of the team the EV spreads and movesets in your own time but without further ado let's jump into this first one today I'll just say a big shout out before anything to all of you you guys that purchased and grabbed yourselves a flinch shirt last week we're repping one of the new ones here living that flinch life but uh, we had that promo code last week on the channel to celebrate the launch of our new teespring store with lots of new designs so um if you did buy a shirt last week do send me a photo on twitter or instagram you can find both links to uh, my social feeds down in the description um, and i'd love to retweet them and show them share them with the world and the rest of the flinch squad but the uh, the tees and the hoodies are still available if you'd like to grab one for future events that you're attending or just generally wearing and repping the flinch squad wherever you are i know there was a lot of people over in Cologne in Germany this weekend repping and wearing their flinch shirts so huge shout out to all of you as well keeping that flinch squad strong we've got a first opponent of the episode though so we'll hop straight into team preview right my first opponent today playing uh, Kyogre Eveltal Gengar going to be the Mega, Tapu Lele, Incineroar and Amoongus. So very early Ultra Series team, kind of very standard with the Kyogre and the Evelto here. You're going to see uh, Speed Control from the Evelto more than likely. Scarf Tapu Lele is the obvious item there, I would say. And then you're going to have Gengar going to be the, the mod to trap things in with uh, Incineroar, Fake Out support, Pivot support as well. Um, and then the Amoongus to help against any sort of trick room shenanigans. Straight away, I, I see like Tapu Koko is going to be like really good here, but we have to be careful around the opposing Mega Gengar and the opposing Tapu Lele. Now, it kind of makes me feel like mm, our, Tapu, our Mega Gengar of our own isn't probably the right Pokemon to bring unless we get some speed control up of our own. We've got to start deciding because things are going pretty quickly. So I'm going to just lock in because we're running out. 
with these four Pokemon. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content. And uh, like I say, as always, leave your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on today's episode. Let me know your thoughts on today's team. If you were attending any of the regionals over this past weekend in Germany or the US where they were, where they were being held, uh, do let me know how you got on at those events, how much fun you had. Hope you had a lot of fun, at least. And uh, it would be great to hear from you all about those events if you did attend. Sad that I wasn't able to go over myself, but uh, all in all, the streams were amazing. From what I caught, I couldn't catch a lot of them because it was away this past weekend, but uh, from what I have seen, um, the matches and the commentary was just amazing. So production was just on top this past weekend. So we're going to see Tapu Lele and Gengar come out for my opponent. I think, like, straight away, I, I would like to get Tailwind up. I just worry about... Uh, the Gengar carrying Taunt to shut down our hole, um, which could be a little bit of an issue. Um, but the thing is, if we can get... I'm kind of tempted to leave Hitmon top in here as well, to be honest, um, because I don't really want to switch Kyogre in and take a bunch of damage from Tapu Lele. But I think you you probably do target down the hole rather than anything else. I'll go for the Tailwind. We'll switch in Kyogre and we'll see where we go from there. But on hindsight, Tim on top not really feeling like the best option straight away in this match. Especially with that, that Tapu Lele there. It's denying us that fake out support. Um, again, something like Evelto though would be useful. And especially if Incineroar came out next to that Gengar again would be quite useful there. Um, like I say though, I do fear the taunt from this Gengar and whether or not it goes for it into our hole or now is another thing. If we can get the Tailwind up, I mean, we pretty much can start closing out this game pretty quickly with, with Water Spouts and stuff. Actually going to see the Gengar Protect, which is crazy, I think. Uh, and we are going to see the Tapu Lele go for a Psy Shock. Is into the Kyogre, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but we do get the Tailwind up. And that is huge for us because now we can start really taking advantage of. Uh, I think we double into the Lele as well. Um, because I feel like the Gengar protecting last turn, it's probably going to switch out. Um, so the Lele is the one thing right now that we can definitely get rid of. And it makes life a lot easier for our him on top when it comes back in later. And, and Tapu Koko as well. Uh, we do see the Gengar switch out for my opponent. Uh, Kyogre actually going to hit the field now, which is fine. Um, and Ho-Oh is in a nice position because you haven't been intimidated up to this point. So, um, you've got to imagine Evelto is probably the last Pokemon my opponent's side of the field. Um, oof. Oh, the Scald crit. Okay, well, it means we get a free Brave Bird into this Kyogre. Um, yeah, ho -Oh becomes way less effective once it's intimidated. And this is what I was about to say was these, these Brave Birds are still going to be chucking out lots of damage. Like, if it is Yveltal that comes in next, and things do get a little bit easier. But we've still got to be mindful that the Gengar is in the back for my opponent. And it's not going to be, like, really clean cut to deal with the Gengar with something like Tapu Koko for ourselves, especially if we haven't got Speed Control active on the field. Um, but I mean, right now, another Brave Bird should get the Kyogre from that last bunch of damage that we just launched onto it. And a Scald will do a hefty chunk to the Gengar. I don't think the Gengar's in a position where it can pick up a knockout onto either Pokemon that we've got here, so uh, we're just seeing a double protect from my opponent. Makes it a bit easier for us to target down and things the next turn. Um, and we could double the Gengar, knowing what we've got in the back. Um, but I'm still kind of... <sighs> I still want to get the Kyogre, and I still want to go... Hmm, do I? Does the Kyogre switch out here, knowing that it goes down to another Brave Bird? Or do we see it switch? really sure. I'm going to go for Scald. I'm just going to go for the same play again, because I feel like Scald will do... Yeah, Kyogre does switch. We're going to see the fourth Pokemon, which is going to be Veltal for my opponent. So we've got a Brave Bird into that slot. Now, what's the Gengar going to do? Sludge Bomb. 
probably the hot one, but it might chase down a Kyogre. Burn! We get the burn! It makes it so much easier. Okay, we get the Brave Bird as well into this Eveltal. So our Kyogre's been a good boy today. Getting that crit was pretty big for us. We got the Brave Bird into the Kyogre. Slug Bomb coming out. It's going to be into our speed control set. about hot or being able to take that. The Gengar going down now. And um, allowing Kyogre to come back onto the field as our Tailwind does pitter out. Um, but this isn't too bad because with Tapu Koko on the back now, you've got to think. Tapu Koko comes in for us and it's going to be pretty easy sailing from there on out. Um, it depends what speed this Kyogre is running. I would imagine our Hot Oil is a little bit faster though. Um, we don't have... Protect on Ho'o, so it's not really an option here. So we can protect Kyogre um, and just go for the Tailwind. And if Ho'o odd speeds the supposing Kyogre, then get the Tailwind up, and I think we've got this pretty much locked. Got to be a bit careful around the Evelto as well, because the Evelto could still have Sucker Punch, and as soon as we bring the Tapu Koko onto the field, then it does have access to those Sucker Punches. Um, but I think the Kyogre is definitely the, the thing that we need to, to focus down on first. We're going to see a Tailwind from the Uvelto. It's going to match our, our Tailwind if we can get it, which we do. And then we'll see this Kyogre. Um, probably going to take down an Origin Pulse, yeah. And it will take down a... Yeah, a hole going down now. Okay. But that's not the worst. Like, it isn't the worst thing in the world. Because we, we are going to be able to get Coco onto the field. Um, and like I say, we've matched Tailwind, so it's not it's not the end of the world here because Coco now puts on so much pressure to deal with this Kyogre. Uh, we've still got him on top in the back, so I think what I probably like to do is just switch uh, him on top in for Kyogre, so we get at least an Intimidate onto that Eveltal while we we've got the opportunity to, and I'll go for a Thunderbolt into the Kyogre. And um, this one's been pretty straightforward for us, I think. And I think a lot of things kind of leaned on our side of, of good fortune here because um, it, it has meant it dealing with the Kyogre and, and the pressure from my opponent's side of the field is a lot worse than it would have been if we didn't get the the, um, the, the KO with the Skull onto the Lele, which we never would have done uh, if it hadn't crit. So it means that Brave Bird into the Kyogre, I mean, took a lot more damage and put my opponent in a much worse position but it just goes to show I think that how important it is if, if your pr primary speed control is Tailwind making sure that you get that up as soon as possible against these sort of teams because it puts you in a position where you can do a lot more work and put your opponent under pressure and you see by the time they get their Tailwind set up it's just not it's not really as effective as it would have been early game. You maybe see the Eveltal come out as a lead for my opponent and, and go for it that way. It might have been a bit easier for them to go with. Now we've just seen the Eveltal, the last Pokemon standing, and we might see a forfeit here. We'll go for a fake out and Thunderbolt, and that should be enough for us to uh, close this first one up. And we pick up a win, which is really nice for us. So um, a good little start with us. We've not got that weather ball going yet, but uh, I'm going to be... Hopeful, stay hopeful for our next game. We may see a Groudon. Hopefully we do. Watch, we'll not play a single Groudon team all week. <laughs> it'll be it'll be typical. Typical. I'm cursing us, but uh, no, I'm only joking. I'm sure we'll bump into Groudon soon enough. But yes. Um, and I did have a, a Premier Challenge to attend this weekend, but unfortunately, being the only person from VG that, that, that showed meant there was no no event so I was pretty sad so next PC lined up is going to be Bristol this this coming weekend which is going to be a lot of fun I'm really looking forward to it. obviously my hometown and um, so going to be good and I'm sure we're going to have good numbers for it as well we're not going to see a crowd on next which is really sad but uh, we'll get into team preview and we'll see what we can do against this archetype Right, so my next opponent is playing a Rayoga team uh, accompanied by Tapu Koko and Metagross, which is going to be the Mega of the team, or a secondary Mega of the team, you've got to think, behind that Mega Rayquaza, uh, the Incineroar, and Tapu Fini. So, um, all in all, Tapu Koko does amazingly well for us. We've got to be careful around the opposing Tapu Koko, for sure, um, because it does threaten our Kyogre and our ho pretty badly. But Gengar isn't bad. We've got to watch out for, obviously, the Incineroar. 
will take big damage from things like Rayquaza and Kyogre, but we can use it to pin my opponent in, I feel. I'm going to lead Gengar, Hitmontop. Do we want to bring Cartana to this match? Cartana could be good. Um, what's going to be better against the Ray? I think probably Korko here. And then we want probably Kyogre, I think, in our last slot. Yeah, let's go with Kyogre. Let's leave the whole Horde home. It's a little bit sad. It's a little bit sad that we've not got the matchups today to really showcase what the team's all about. But you've got to play against these other archetypes, these other popular archetypes, and see that you can come on the other side looking rosy. Because if you can't, then it, there's something wrong. Because you're going to show up to tournaments with this sort of build, and you're definitely going to come up against these sort of teams um, two or three times in a tournament. So you've got to have the right answers for these sort of teams going forward um, and this is why the testing phase is always good because you can go into battle spot or showdown or wherever and just test the team out against these architects see how you do against them see what your answers are like against them because if they aren't coming up positive that's when you know you've got to go back to the team to the drawing board look at where you can maybe patch things to have a little bit of a better outcome uh, going forward right we are going to see Tapu Koko and Rayquaza come out for my opponent um I'm gonna. Oh, I really want to target the Coco. To be honest, I really want to get rid of this Coco. It's so it's such a pain for the team, and like I already mentioned at the start of the episode, how awkward the Coco can be for us to deal with. Um, but I'm so tempted just to go sludge bomb into it. Hope we win the speed time, get rid of it. It's risky because we could take a Z move, uh, an Electrum. Um, but I've got to, I think I have to fake out the Rayquaza. There's also the, the I'd like to fake out the Coco and double into it, but I don't want to leave this Rayquaza unchecked because it can Dragon Ascent, it can Earth Power, it can do so much damage and just rip through a lot of things. Uh, is Coco going to protect here? Okay. I mean, we're not losing out too much here. Uh, we did get the fake out into the Ray. It is a Mega Evolving, which is quite interesting. Uh, we do get the sludge bomb into that core core. So, what do we do? Well, I'm kind of could we could protect Gengar here and bring in our own type of core core. It's probably not a bad move to be honest. And with the core core protecting the last turn, we could take this opportunity to go for the sludge bomb again and then switch top out for core core. Because we could see a Dragon Ascent into that slot to get rid of the Hitman on top. And Coco is probably the one thing on the team that can take that a lot better than anything else. We lose the Speed Tie though, which is really, 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 really unfortunate for us. Because, yeah, now um, we're going to lose Gengar. And it's a risk, you know, we both went for it. Like, if my opponent loses the Speed Tie, they lose their Coco. If we lose the Speed Tie, we lose our Gengar. I think they're getting the better end of the trade regardless here because we're losing the Mega and they're not. Um, and now our ability to deal with the Coco becomes a lot more difficult. Um, and a Tailwind. Tailwind from Ray. Wow, okay. Right, now I think what I'll do is I will bring in Kyogre, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but my logic is I'm going to switch it straight out. I don't want this Coco protecting this next turn. I want, I want it targeting my Kyogre so I can go for the Ferium into the opposing Coco and hopefully pick up the knockout there. Um, do get the rain up. And maybe we force the hand of this Ray to, to Mega Evolve as well. We'll get another Intimidate onto it, which is always going to be useful. Uh, but we've got to go for that Z move now. I'm hoping that we don't see Earth Power from the Ray. Because Earth Power from the Rayquaza into our Coco, I mean, that that's going to be game over right now. Tailwind Ray, though. Something I've always thought about, but never actually played around with. So we'll get another Intimidate onto the Ray with a hit on top. And there's the, the Mega Evolution here. Please don't be Earth Power. Please. <laughs> there's the Delta Stream. Kicking up. 
destroy in our screen. Uh, calm mind. Oh, what is this? It's definitely taking the Twinkle Tackle now. There's a Dragon Ascent. This will take down our Hitmon top. Oh, we actually survive. Okay, minus two. That's not that bad then. <sighs> Car mind, car car. So it's got thunderbolt or thunder. Car mind, protect, and probably dazzle, dazzle, razzle, dazzle. Here's as they move. I feel so deflated now. You see something like that, you're like, ah, oh, come on. But we have to kind of continue. We have to see what we can do. It's not something that you see that commonly used. Um, but when it comes up in situations like this, it makes a matchup so much harder. And especially when it's the one Pokemon that you're already feeling like you've got issues with uh, to deal with. Um, right. I don't know if a Dazzle is going to be enough to get the opposing core call. We'll protect Kyogre. We need to try and stall at these Tailwind turns. Uh, we'll go for a Dazzling Gleam, though. We'll, for, we'll see if we can get the opposing core call. I don't know if a uh, Dazzling Gleam is going to be enough to get it. But it's going to probably Dazzle us now, I'd imagine. And maybe an Extreme Speed Dazzle would be enough to get it. But the, And if they Dazzle, they're kind of giving the Kyogre an opportunity to attack here. Do they want to do that or do they want to go for the Thunderbolt? I mean the protect from our end is pretty obvious so it would open the door for my opponent to probably go for that Dazzling Gleam knowing that the Kyogre is not going to protect and they're quite safe. Godless, it requires that is eventually going to um, switch out. We're going to see Incineroar hit the field now for my opponent. The Ray doesn't want to take a Dazzle. And then the Coco going to protect here. Okay. So we are going to be able to stall out this Tailwind, which is good, and we're going to get some damage, at least onto the, the Incineroar here. Um, not very much, though. Not very much at all. Um, I think you see Dazzle and Gleam, but I just don't think you risk letting this Kyogre attack. We're going to bring in him on top and protect our Coco. I don't think we're going to be able to win this one. We need our Coco to be as healthy as possible. At least we're getting an Intimidate onto the Incineroar. The only thing is, if they go for a Thunderbolt into our Coco for some weird reason, then there's a chance that we can... Like, if Hitmontop's still around... No, they go for the Thunderbolt into top. Okay. And then the, t the, the tailwind pit of that. The electric terrain does disappear as well, which makes things a little bit easier for us. It's still not super easy. Ah, <sighs> okay. We've got to make a call here, I think. D Thunderbolt into the Kyogre. I think you've got to. We could win two speed ties, you see, and probably get the core core with two dazzles. I just don't think one dazzle is enough. And it's still difficult because I think when the Rayquaza comes back in, we're still going to have a Kyogre to deal with alongside the Rayquaza, which me makes it so much more difficult. Like, especially without the electric terrain to, to boost our electric type attacks to make sure that we're getting the knockout on that Kyogre. Um, we are seeing the Incineroar switch out. Kyogre going to hit the field in place. Okay, so I'll find more of it. I mean, any damage is quite. It's good at this point, isn't it? And if we win the speed tie, and if by some chance we can take down this Coco, then we're not out of. We're still in this match. It's just. At the minute, it's feeling very difficult. We do win the speed tie. We do take it down! And it's not even a crit! We didn't even have to worry, we just got the faster type of Coco. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Well, we're back in this. But it's still not going to be easy at all. 
because we've got to we've got to thunderbolt this Kyogre and Ice Beam the Ray and hope the Ray goes for a Dragon Ascent and hope lots of things happen. Kyogre gonna switch out, yeah, makes sense. The Incineroar coming back in, it will take a Thunderbolt. Um, now, we, we, ideally you wanna see Dragon Ascent into Kyogre, which we should take. And then, okay, the, the Rayquaza are gonna protect, which is fine. We'll get a bit more damage into that Incineroar. Bit critical hit, helping us out massively. Right now we double. We have to double protect here. I don't want to. I don't want to risk any 50-50. Like guess where they're going to fake out and get it wrong because that will be the end of the game straight away. We want to try and risk any, like just mitigate any risk if we can. Right. Okay. So double protect. We'll see fake out come out into Coco. No Kyoga. Okay. Tailwind. Now this makes things a little bit more tricky because the Kyogre coming in, we, we could scald. Like I just need to get rid of the ray. Really need to get rid of the ray. Could we double the ray though? I'm not really worried about the Incineroar. I worry about the ray switching out to the Kyogre to take an Ice Beam. I'm going to double the ray with a Thunderbolt as well in case the Kyogre comes in on that slot because the Kyogre and Tailwind, okay, it's going to be extreme speed. Uh, which, like, this doesn't help us at all either, really. Okay, well, this is the other option that my opponent's got. Yeah, and we don't take that. And the Ice Beam's not going to be enough to take down the ray. And now I think that's it. So, <sighs> probably the one turn my opponent could have done to close out the game. I just worried there too much I think about the Ray switching out for the Kyogre to come in and then take instant advantage of the um, the Tailwind. But I guess at the same time it's kind of risky switching in on Tapu Koko. Like once you get rid of the Tapu Koko you've got to think about that. Um, things get a bit easier uh, because then your Kyogre is not really in any, any danger at all when it comes in. A little bit of an issue, but I think really like just highlighting how much of an issue Tapu Koko actually is for this team to deal with. Um, and I already knew it going into this episode. What I'm going to do actually is go away from this episode. It'd be great to have your opinions on what you think uh, would be good adjustments to deal with Tapu Koko in this team. Um, and I'm going to go away as well. I'm going to come back tomorrow and we're going to have a little bit of a variation on this build. Maybe Togo Tomorrow could be a nice option there, maybe something like uh, Raichu, Kanto Raichu could be good, Mega Manetric as well could be an option of uh, Mega Gengar, um, but I think we definitely need something to um, to help mitigate because at the moment it's feeling like it's such a problem where there's so much pressure that it's putting onto the team that it's, caught, it's affecting other areas of how the team can actually um, perform and I think with Tapu Koko being such a common Pokemon at the moment it's definitely something that we can't really continue with without addressing and that would be my thoughts on it and I think that's something that you should always take away with you when you're doing your own team building yourselves very good game to my opponent good game to both my opponents today I think we've learned some valuable lessons going into the rest of the week especially in concerned being concerned with this archetype anyway so like I said I'm gonna go away I'm gonna make some changes we'll come back tomorrow we'll adapt the team I'm um, excited still to play this for the rest of the week so I hope you are as well and uh, we'll come back to it tomorrow so I'm just gonna say thank you so much for tuning in today my friends have a great day morning afternoon night whatever time it is and I'll catch you all for another episode tomorrow so until then take care and bye bye